Are you a Max Sinista? I am. I am. Uh, wait, wait, help me out. This is HBO Max? No. It could be. Could be. It could be. You could yeah. be a Max Sinista in that way. Okay. What's no way educate me. What is what is a Max Sinista? TJ Maxx. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with I'm familiar with his work. Yeah. Yes. I think it's just if you go there sometimes. Yeah. Is that the definition? <laughs> That's kind of the criteria. <laughs> That's such a low stakes <laughs> criteria. <laughs> Hope I ended up here. <laughs> The Max Nista. Yeah. yeah. Uh, TJ Miller Max. Is that yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I was thinking of the TJs that I know in the world. <laughs> Just that one. Yeah. Is there a TJ that is not a man? Like, like uses the name TJ. I've never met one. Yeah. It Theodora like thing. James Max. Could you take this fucking seriously? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really fucking disappointing you guys right now. You're doing great. Killing it. Yeah, you're killing it. You're doing amazing. We're yeah. so happy you're here. Thank We're you very glad that you're here this on so Two Nosy cool. Meerkats Two Nosy Meerkats podcast, back. which is where we are and what we're doing Which is where we are. Today. We're doing it. We're doing we it. Here. We're killing it. Would Luke, you like to introduce our guest? Lucas, I would love to introduce our guest. This guest who we have today has been taking New York City by storm. The setup and punchline on this hoe. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. <laughs> she is killing it. She's hilarious. Keep it going for Isabel Levin. Isabel Levin. How are you today? I'm doing well. That's I know wonderful. we just made you watch an Ellen Generous sex scene, so <laughs> you can't be doing that well. I've been better. <laughs> <laughs> what there were was your... more more of her skin than I wanted to see, if I'm being honest. How much did you want to see? Just face. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the and sweaters maybe are for. Hands. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just like through a sheet. Exactly. I really wanted a G-rated. Oh like, yeah, like it like an Orthodox sex exactly. scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> through the sheet, baby. <laughs> Exactly. She's one I haven't had fantasies about, I have to be honest. Mm. <laughs> and now I really won't. What about yeah. Rosie O'Donnell? Um, more than Ellen. Definitely more than yeah. Ellen. Oh, yeah. oh, I think th oh, <laughs> I think she's better at sex. I'll say that. For sure. I think she's Absolutely. infinitely better at sex. Has you have you hooked up with both? Is uh, that why they're gay now? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why I'm a lesbian. You they turned are, me. You are yeah. Brooklyn's biggest dyke, I would say. And you said that. That's <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing to be. No, but I've said th I've said this before, but Rosie O'Donnell is an underrated stand-up. She is an yes. underrated. I don't think she gets enough credit. They're both for good. Yeah. They, they are both good, but especially Rosie O'Donnell. I think she's been a little bit more forgotten just on quality she's alone. She's so good. I it, like when did she? Was it the eighties? Eighties, uh, not. But can, but the reason why I say so is that like one day I was like home from college and I was literally just like flicking through the channels and I stumbled upon her on like the first minute of a special she had on HBO. And immediately I started laughing. I was like, let me give her another minute. And then it just like kept being good. I was like, all right, wow. let me give it another five minutes. <laughs> and then I just stayed for the whole hour. I was like, that That's was amazing. It was so good. And it was it also had like a message about like identifying the signs of a heart attack. Because that was like a big chunk of it was about her experience of having a heart attack and how it was like she had it for like over a day. You know why she had a heart attack? Because <laughs> she saw Ellen naked. <laughs> It'll do it to That's you. That's what I want in my stand-up. People talking about heart attack signs. Yeah. That's yeah. Like a dream. Yeah. You wanna you wanna just lay them out. That's what all. That's my all. I what want. are what are the signs? Um, your left arm. Yeah. Yeah. Does appears. Appears. If you have a left arm. <laughs> yeah. Game over, dude. That's all you need. <laughs> if you have one. Yeah. What would, what did she talk about? Like ch chest hurts? I, it was. I I'm gonna be honest. I forgot all of the details. <laughs> Wow. I, I'm not a good, good I'm not a good person to recount it, but I am a good person to say, hey, you should watch it. I you forget the name, but it. Rosie O'Donnell special. It's amazing. I'm going to watch it. It's really, really I'm good. Excited. We'll be Goldberg, too. We'll oh, be Goldberg's yeah. very funny. Amazing. Yeah. I met her first manager. What? He's a performance artist called Reverend Billy. That's interesting. Wild. How'd you yeah. meet him? Uh, it, he knew my dad. Okay. My dad was because like this, this dude, he's like a performance artist and he has this like traveling choir from the church of stop shopping which is sort of like it's just sort of like preaching against consumerism oh wow okay. and i'm part yeah. of the church of women be shopping <laughs> yeah it's a fun church to be a part of yeah women it's, be shopping really took it's over. more of a scientology thing <laughs> oh sure yeah because you, you take a lot of money d d speak for yourself <laughs> <laughs> hunk away we're uh, we're talking about women be shopping in the car Oh, you were? Yeah. Well, uh, in, in, in what capacity? That, well, we like dating women who mm. have a sense of style. Yeah. Mm. And it doesn't matter what the style is. 
but like you thought about it a little bit like that's very attractive Ooh, i like this wait what are other qualities that you find attractive that if you were dating you would be like i need these i need x y and z well i actually i made a list (gasps) um i was told because i i was dating people that weren't a right fit so isa was like you let's make let's make a list in a notebook Ooh. to guide your process and mm. then the woman i was actually dating and continue to date saw the list and was like that's really dumb that you did that <laughs> because then you're limiting yourself and i was like you know what? that's fair I, no 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 i don't like this i, I no, no no i think the more specifics the better i mean then to a point to, to a like, point like you shouldn't go cra- color but hair. oh like what or like mine was very general in a way that okay. was also embarrassing of like nice and she was like that you shouldn't have to put that on a list <laughs> you'd be shocked it comes up <laughs> it does so. no it's a it's a good thing to verbalize and speak into the universe to be yeah. explicit about to it to be explicit absolutely nice in general nice to me uh, nice to wait staff that's yeah. important huge. that's huge. huge i like yep. a can't read can't mm. read uh no thumbs perfect yeah <laughs> <laughs> not <feels> gay <laughs> Straight women without thumbs. Yes. Uh, homophobic. <laughs> That's the dream. Yeah. I'm well, not the, a homophobic the... woman. How do you find thumbless people? Is there like a special app for that? Yeah. Yeah, but it's <laughs> but it's hard because they can't use yeah, it. They, they can't use it. It's all in a it's all in it's all in Braille. It... Oh. <laughs> don't you need don't you need your thumb to read Braille? I you need fingers for sure, but <laughs> I guess, wait, maybe now that I'm thinking about it, you can read Braille with just your fingers. You can kind of yeah. read it the same way you finger hold it. <laughs> wow. What is a clitoris if not the first thing of Braille? <laughs> I'm ready for Braille. <laughs> um, wait, what else is on your list? What else is on my list? Mm. Keep um, going. I'm just going to adjust our camera a little bit. Keep going. I think smart. It was a horrifyingly general list. Um, <laughs> I love I love you being so vulnerable. You're like, I want a girl who's like nice, smart, nice, smart, doesn't murder people. <laughs> yeah, but like, a couple? Just yeah. a few. Just a I mean, as long as she's reflective about it. Yes. That's fine. Thoughtful. Or like, thought about it. Generous. Mm-hmm. That should have been on there. Yeah. Um, very good. Yes. This is a good list. I think I was very the right amount of mental illness was also important to me. Like, Mm. I feel like you have to have enough to be understanding, but not so much where we have a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pull the mic just a little closer to you. Just a little bit. You're doing amazing. Amazing. You're doing amazing. But no, uh, so what is the correct amount of mental illness? I feel like stable, but has certainly had issues. (laughs) Because I I feel like there's a certain kind of, like, compassion that comes Mm -hmm. with, like, oh, you've had a bad time. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, medic like, if not medicated, trying to get better is helpful. Yes, huge. yes, yeah, huge. They're on, they're on the road up. They're like, I'm, Absolutely. I'm reaching the goal. Yes. I'm not there, but I'm, I'm going. I'm <laughs> going. The way. Yeah. I really like a girl like lives in a swamp, green skin. <laughs> That's your time. Oh, yeah. But can Princess. she have thumbs or no? Ears no like a pasta thumbs. shape. No yeah. <laughs> Absolutely no thumbs. Only. One finger. I like a one finger woman. What is she? The other like a penis. creature. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Oh yeah, lives under water. Mm. The Loch Ness monster. Oh she's yeah. Thing. Oh she's she put oh she puts out dude. So hot. Yeah. I would I would have sex with the Loch Ness monster. Oh would yeah. You? Well she, well you, she's already wet so that's taken care of. Yeah, <laughs> the implication being I can't get a woman wet. <laughs> it's so funny. Hey, I know you. <laughs> Okay, Loch Ness Monster or Ellen? <laughs> and everyone <laughs> exists on that spectrum. Loch Ness everyone Monster ex- or Ellen Loch Ness Monster for sure. <laughs> I just saw Ellen have sex, so it was... Has to be better than that. What do you think? Loch Ness Monster or Ellen? Oh, that'll be the food, I think. I mean, Ellen seemed like a top. So I'd be kind of curious you a top? what that's like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I um, Here's an embarrassing thing. I used to be a top when I was younger and had a... Um, a, a better sense of stamina <laughs> and then i got older and i was like i want to lay there i want to lay around <laughs> i love laying around i love being like slapped around perfect yeah it's the way to do it yeah my stepbrother i i'm dating somebody who's like in really great shape um and he didn't understand why i got to be the top when she could beat the shit out of me <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was like, it's an agreement we have. <laughs> That's the it's, point. She's a top in life. Exactly. Like it's not based off who's actually more powerful. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we just pretend. So much of being a bottom is you could be a top, but you don't feel like it. Right. Probably <laughs> like not today. Insane. This is a crazy thing to jump back in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you left. We started talking about gay shit so quick. <laughs> this is why I need to be here. So to, what about the L word? Shut down the lesbian. What about the L word? <laughs> hey, I. Love is love. <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. We, Fuck gay when we had Audrey Black on, we made Lucas watch The L Word. It's an amazing show. <laughs> I have I have a fun fact about that. Or not fact, but the woman who played Bet was... Which the, one is Bet? The the hot one. Uh, yeah, none of them. <laughs> <laughs> she's the one, like, she's the like art half gallery. black. She's the art gallerist. I, I'm struggling. Oh wait, is she? Was she in Flashdance? Yes. Jennifer yes. Beals. Yes. yes. Okay. I Jennifer know. Beals. Oh, I know Jennifer Beals. Jennifer Beals. So okay. she was my one of my mom's really good friends from college's best friend from high school. So she was at a birthday party that I was at when I was six, <gasps> and she turned to my mom's best friend and was like, "That one's a lesbian." <gasps> so that's my connection to the show. Wow. Wait, said that about you? Called it when I was six years old. Yep. What about you at six years old was so gay? Everything. Everything. <laughs> I mean, my voice has been like this sort of forever. That's Whoa. Crazy. So when I was in eighth grade, um, I was taking a like theater, like a drama class, mm. and I got an A, not to brag, but my grade report said like we were very um we were very impressed that Isabel impersonated a man for the entire semester. We were particularly impressed by the voice. <laughs> been like this a long time super disconcerting to hear this asking like for a juice box it's a yeah <laughs> i think we had similar experiences when i was in fifth grade i played buffalo bill very well <laughs> in annie get your gun unbelievable were there boys at your school or no uh, yes. okay <laughs> here's the thing though i really wanted to be annie i did i wanted to be annie so bad and i auditioned for annie and uh -huh. i like practice i couldn't really sing but i kind of talk <laughs> saying mm -hmm. my way through it Perfect. okay and uh i i uh, was so much expecting to be Annie that I was preparing. <laughs> Basically, like, the drama teacher came in and announced all of our parts while we were, like, in our regular class. And mm. uh, I was so much preparing to hear, and Ga and Gabrielle is Annie, that I was, um, I was preparing to fake faint in the shock. You were so ready. I was so ready. And then they <laughs> said, and Buffalo Bill... Is and he mispronounced my name. He said Buffalo Billy the Gabriel, and I was like, "Well, surely they're talking about someone else because I'm Annie." <laughs> and then he left, and everyone was like, "Congrats on Buffalo Bill." And I was like, and then I I went to the stairwell Aww. and I started, I started to cry. <laughs> and then uh, the drama teacher came in and was like, "I cast you as Buffalo Bill because I didn't think anyone else could do it," which is such Whoa. a lie. Again, there were boys at the school. <laughs> there Wait, were, what was her motivation? Qualified. Do you think for uh, casting you? Um, him. Don't misgender. Oh, excuse me. My drama him. teacher. Him. Sometimes drama teachers can be hims. Yeah. Who knew? He, him. His name was RC. Very nice man. RC. Uh, what well, was it was also just the way you said it. It felt like, it felt like. A, Why? Because he was compassionate. He had to be a woman. <laughs> yeah. That's what I always assume. Yeah. Really fascinating. No, because if I was that drama teacher, I'd be like, because you're a boy. <laughs> you'd, you'd be, be like, harsh. You'd be like that cult that made people transition. Did you see that documentary? Wait. What, which one was it? Was it Twin Flame, that one? Yes. I haven't seen it yet, I but I need to. This. Oh, it's uh, people made this cult about like uh, uh, about trying to find someone's soulmate. And they're like, no, this is your soulmate. And they force you to marry them and like Holy shit. change your diet. And so that like it's it's so it's fucked up. I haven't seen it, but I've been told about it. And I need to watch it. So the whole thing. So it was basically like if speed dating was a cult or like a. The idea was, okay, it was this couple who ran it, and the couple was like, we are twin flames, we're soulmates, and everyone else should be twin flames like us. So they, like, had people, you know, come in and be part of their cult who, like, they had one woman marry a man who messaged her on Facebook, who was, like, 11 years older than her, and it was like, you found your soulmate, congrats, that's your twin flame. But what ended up happening was a lot of lonely women were joining the group. Oh, no. So they started putting the women together, but they didn't believe in homosexuality. So they were like, you're a, they would like say to some of the women, like, you're a man. 
and what? like make them transition. What was so interesting was a couple of the women were like, wow, I might actually be trans. And they like transition and it kind of like they like I, I didn't know it was going to I didn't know it was going to be a broken clock right twice a day deal. Yeah, That's dude. Wild. But then some of them were like I was never a man, like I was a woman. And they had the, to be to be this. clear about the documentary, they had like a tr- uh like a trans academic on being like this is like uh pretty like horrifying to the trans community obviously. That sounds like, terrifying. Yeah. That sounds really terrifying. That's wild. Also the way they really? made them change their diet was they wanted the women to be fatter, which I feel like is unusual for cults. That Do part they of it I like starve women. Yeah, they usually kind of try and make women kind of skinny and like oh, no. sexy pilled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. And that's and that's what I like about cults. Exactly. <laughs> that they starve women. Yeah, it's nice. You wow. you love that. You have your own cult about that. I do, yeah. Member of one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh yeah. yeah. No, but no, I was thinking a little bit about like what theater teachers have like cast me and then told me I was as well. Because like I was always cast as older men. It was never like it was never like the. I li- was also always cast as older men. Were you also cast as older men? I was cast as Yertle the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> that was my main theater moment. So oh, I, yeah? I feel like that's older man coded. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> how did you? Uh, how did you prepare? Um, Method or. Coming out of I your shell? A, I had a cardboard turtle shell. Okay. Um, nice. And that was my big contribution. Hell yeah. Um, I had duct tape shoulder straps. I was ready for anything. That's awesome. How did you did you get into the turtle's mind? Um, I was already in it. I feel like the casting was really good. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be wild if I went method on that one. <laughs> wait, wait. What happened in like the Sturdy story? Exactly. What happened? In, what happened in the course of the play? In the course of the play, it was the Susicle. <gasps> We, oh yeah and i think the like this was Jew- jewish summer camp like it wasn't explicitly jewish but everybody was a jew okay as summer camp tends to be yes um and as turtles rarely are exactly <laughs> <laughs> i mean i've never talked to what they might be i feel like it would kind of make sense if they were but it was actually it was it was a pretty impressive production okay um how so it was well compared to high school musical the next year mm. which had never been run through completely and they had to like artificially dial it back and like redo certain scenes during the final production. Um, they got the wrong order of scenes. Oh no! So compared to the next year, I was like, the musical was a huge success. Okay. Giant success. Nice. Mm-hmm. I want to hear more about High School Musical getting the order of scenes wrong. <laughs> was it like yeah. Troy Bolton being like, "I'm a musical theater star," and then him being like. Well, I guess it's the basketball scholarship. No, 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 this is good. Yes. I like a Pulp Fiction twist. <laughs> yeah. It's like non-consecutive. It went terribly wrong. I like that. They were, but like they tried really hard. Like they were having the kids do the like, what was the the basketball dance? Mm. Like early in the morning, like drilling them. Like people were really trying to make it work. Um, but it was in part because it was run by this counselor who I believe got fired. But was like really out of it and like my main memory of this counselor is she sat us down and we were playing um never have i ever Mm -hmm. and we were like 11. um and everyone was like never have ever like had a cat and she's like never have i ever had sex in a car (laughs) (laughs) and and everyone was like um so she wasn't like the most like tuned into camp Never have I ever done coke in the bathroom of a freaking airplane. Oh, exactly. gotta put my finger down. The eleven-year-olds are like, "What?" Like, um, Never have I ever escaped a cartel with <laughs> ex-president Jimmy Carter. Like, <laughs> never, All right. Never have I ever uh, uh, eaten sushi. Never have I ever killed your mom. <laughs> <laughs> that was her vibe. Fully her vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Edie, uh. <laughs> I love a counselor who breaks boundaries. The best kind. <laughs> oh, yeah. really the best. What was the the rest of your camp experience like? like well, I wasn't very good at camp. How like so? any of the, like it's for people who are competent at sports and like spirit and like know the words of songs. Okay. Um, and like whenever I won attitude or like awards, it was for like what you've made improvement or like you were nice. Like it was never like you're good at sailing. Um, right. but it worked out fine. Okay. Yes. Wait, did you, what, what no, did you, my latte. 
Nice. Uh, what was it that you feel like you improved on most? Improved on over most. Over the course of camp. Um, I think the awards were candidly ill distributed. Mm. I think I there was limited improvement. Um, I was in. I'm not an athlete, so I think any boating progress or like kayaking mm -hmm. that was a point of improvement. Yeah. But still bad at it. I worked for a nonprofit a couple summers ago. And it was like middle-aged people who were like pretty out of shape, working in like sort of HRE roles. Um, and as a field trip, they were gonna have us go kayaking. And like nobody clocked that that's like a very hard thing to do. Yeah, um, I'm so, so sorry, but would you mind taking the plastic off, not over the couch? <laughs> Stuff has spilled before. That's fair, you have to protect it. The couch is so white. Thank you. I'm so impressed. Hey, white, hey white is right. Can we just <laughs> let's just that's what I always argue. <laughs> you have said that before, yeah, actually. all the time, <laughs> kind of a lot to a point where I'm like, Should we have that's my big thing? Yeah. <laughs> just white rights and power. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, could you, say, could you say white power into the mic? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm smooth again, in and then immediately, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get that's who I am so now. Fast. I just really want Joe Rogan to like me. <laughs> oh my god, wait, okay. If oh, wait, if you were to go on uh, Joe Rogan, would yes. you try to come in with an agenda, or would you be like, no, 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 I'm just gonna try to be the nicest guest I can possibly be? The nicest at this point in my career, I'll do anything, <laughs> <laughs> like, truly. It's okay. like he'll, he can give me talking points. Nice. I wish I had more of a backbone. I mean, I. Just truly anything anybody wants. My manager was like, we want you to do acting. Um, and he's wonderful. And But I am not good at, like, that's not what I'm wanted or, like, I'm good at. Um, and he was like, I need you to make a character real. And I was like, of course. Like, I'd be happy to, whatever. So I, like, ordered a bear mask or, like, an astronaut helmet. And was, like, in my room panicking. <laughs> Wait, like you ordered these, these items before coming up with characters? Or were you I was like, I'll come up with a character. <laughs> You're online, like, funny, quirky hats. Exactly. Yeah. Like, that'll do it. What's a wacky thing for an astronaut and or a bear to exactly. do? Like, Maybe side by side. I was growling. Like, it was a lot. <laughs> Can you do your bear character? Please. Ah. <laughs> Whoa, it's just like it's what a like bear a bear do. is in the room. He yeah. was like, candidly, that was the best one. <laughs> and after that, he's a lovely man. He was like, we will be applying to writing opportunities only. <laughs> he's oh my the God. best. Oh, <laughs> what did the astronaut do? <laughs> the astronaut. Okay, so well, the idea okay. was. <laughs> I love this. I love this so much. <laughs> well, Neil Armstrong was like. Um, like small step for man, like giant leap for mankind, yeah. or whatever. And so it was like, oh, that's so clever. He probably had to draft that. Yeah. So it was forty-five seconds of me in the astronaut helmet, running through different possibilities that he was probably playing with, on his way oh. up in the rocket ship. That's a good idea. That's a, it wasn't that's a good funny at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good concept. That's really generous. Super <laughs> generous. Um, another one that I had, um, not well reviewed. Not okay. well reviewed at all. Um, you know the 127 hours guy that cut off his own arm? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what if we did a documentary about the guy that found the arm? <laughs> and it was a two second clip of me screaming. <laughs> It was like, you know what, this isn't gonna work out at all. I'm like, I cannot act. I like after I made this, I was like, I should go to law school. <laughs> like so, fuck this. It's a lot of you just grunting and growling. That was, yeah. that was all of it. Like I didn't talk in some n a number of them. <laughs> I, I unironically really like this. These I are was really Jesus nice. in one. <laughs> you were Jesus. What did Jesus do? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus growl. Was he I just going, to... Christ, I just want one glass of water. Ah. <laughs> that was kind of the vibe. It was, there were a lot of puns. I was in a sheet. Like, I was much more naked than you should be when you send anything into industry. Um, okay. Like, it was, like, so close to being able to see a nipple. <laughs> it was a mess. <laughs> All right. Um, Ellen? Ellen? 
<laughs> Ellen, there's a nipple here. <laughs> Ellen, there's a I'm Ellen, there's a nipple here that needs your attention. Ellen, there's a gay nipple. <laughs> we need. If she propositioned me for sex, I would call my girlfriend and be like, I I need to do it. <laughs> Indi- I'm sorry, but industry is in the room. Exactly. <laughs> knowing, your, my knowing your girlfriend, she'd be like, yeah, of course. <laughs> She is wonderful. Yeah, she'd be like, <laughs> and, that's career, right? and that's fair. And that's <laughs> fair. So supportive. Yeah. Oh. You should do you should do an Ellen uh character, but Perfect. it's just a growling bear. <laughs> I could wear a wig and growl. Ellen when she sees Portia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you have the bear that. mask on. <laughs> this is Ellen in a bear mask. <laughs> This is <laughs> this is Obama in a bear mask. <laughs> this is Trump in a bear mask. Was, are you get, are you getting it yet? <laughs> For a few weeks, I was so optimistic that anybody was gonna like this tape. I was like, oh, maybe they're gonna ask me to just like touch up or reshoot a few segments so i was carrying the bear mask in my bag for weeks <laughs> wait for wait why did you have the bear mask in your bag just realize oh I someone's to, gonna like, need this reshoot part of the character reel. <laughs> and you'd had to have it on your person at any given time I'm like i want to turn it in fast <laughs> people, at, people at the open mic would be like do the bear character now do the bear one <laughs> oh all right if you insist <laughs> that's this is everybody's favorite <laughs> it's also especially hilarious because like seeing your stand-up and knowing your style which is so good but it's so specifically not mask friendly no i'm not mask friendly at all not femme friendly either. no not no. even a little bit mm. just uh really, really it's just friendly unkind just friendly. that's what minorities. i go for. it's kind of hostile i mm. mean i the only date i've ever been on after like from somebody meeting me after a show <gasps> mm. um we were at dinner and she was like expressing disappointment. She was like, you're not anything like I thought you'd be. And I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, well, I thought you'd be mean and funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, brutal. Like that was both mean and funny. So <laughs> fucking brutal. So she was like, oh, you're nice, but also eh. Exactly. I'm like, I don't like oh. this at all. But sure, other thing. So she was Russian. That doesn't matter for the story, but it matters. Um, Cause yeah, she had a Russian out of the date. Full accent. That was what happened. <laughs> oh. Well put nice she was like i the day was going poorly and she was like i have a funny story for you i was like great like hit me um and she's like when i told my dad i was a lesbian he said don't worry i'm fucking my cousin <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh shit and she was like oh, she's single this girl rocks she certainly she's beautiful if that appeals I- <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that? Do you like it when chicks are hot? <laughs> um, no, really not for me. I like uggos. I like uh, I like giving them a chance. <laughs> how, how do you feel about incestuous dads? Uh, love. You're pro. More. Wait, what'd she say about the cousin? Don't worry. Uh, she's infertile. As if that was my primary axis of concern. Um, that was the last person. You know what's crazy is that that would have come up in the conversation, but like so far down the line. You would think. You would think. Yeah. But I do feel like there's certain... I don't know if you guys have felt this way, but I feel like there's a certain breed of date where it's going so bad that there's a point where, like, I could say anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of, like, you're like, I hate this person. I'm just going to be from Antarctica from now on. <laughs> <laughs> where you're just like, I will never see you again. Exactly. It's like, so now I have three identities. Exactly. Like, like yeah. I fucking love lacrosse. Like, you can just like, <laughs> <laughs> like whatever you want. <laughs> What's the worst date you've ever been on? The worst mm. date I've ever been on? Oh. I The worst date I've ever been on, I was home visiting my dad in Chicago. Mm. And I was like, I um, like I want to go out with somebody, but I don't want to get attached. So I'm going to go out with a terrible person. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the plan. Um, You know how nursing homes, when they abuse old people, sometimes the old people's families will sue the nursing homes? Yes. Um, this was a lawyer who defended the nursing homes. Love. And I was like, <laughs> perfect. Girl boss. Perfect. So we met up. And you know when you see someone and you're like, you're not clean. Yeah. <laughs> um, Like super greasy. Soul wise. Exactly. Both. <laughs> All of the above. Yeah. I was not yet 21. So she was like, I'm going to find a bar that's that doesn't give a shit. <laughs> it was like perfect. She was like 30. And we. it was 10 p.m. right by her apartment. Um, she was like jumping around like she was gonna hit me. She was chain smoking. I was like, perfect. Um, she walked into the, we walked into the bar. She orders two drinks for herself. I was like, cool. She had a fist swollen from punching a wall out of anger. Say that again, sorry. She had a fist swollen from punching a wall out of anger. 
her told me like swollen. she yeah. started a fight with a grown man and cheated on her ex and i was like perfect um <laughs> and she was like do you want to come home with me and i was like absolutely <laughs> did y'all smash we went home mm -hmm. every surface was covered in weed crumbs and half empty whiskey bottles I was like, perfect. she had nothing in her fridge except for a year old turkey, which when she noticed was a year old, put it back. Um, <laughs> like we finally went into her room and I was going to close the door and she was like, like, wait, she had a cat. And she was like, wait, cause the cat will feel excluded. <laughs> I was like, okay, the door can stay open. And then we start hooking up and she's like, I'm going to put on music. I was like, okay. Um, Please say it's all. Meow. Are we familiar <laughs> with High Hopes by Panic at the Disco? Yes, yes. On loop for two hours. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's no, the no. worst I've ever been on. No, wait. She's single? No, 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 no. I, no. One, so one <laughs> song on loop by Panic of the Disco. Two hours. But especially that song. The gayest part of that date is you guys had sex for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The worst person in the world, oh you're like, God. well, I'm here. Might as well. <laughs> hey, that was when in my Rome. attitude until terrifyingly recently. <laughs> Oh my like, god. Okay. Wait, how, okay, how did the room smell? Bad. Bad. Bad, 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 bad. This is important. Okay, there's a Kidney. cat. There's a, a, cat. a year plus old turkey. Yes. That's turning into vibe. what? Meat kombucha at that point? I, <laughs> that's a great business idea. You should go on Shark Tank. Meat kombucha. <laughs> Thank you. Sharks. <laughs> I think Mr. Wonderful would love it. I don't know. Do you have worse dates you guys have been on that like sticks out? I, okay, nothing have, as bad as that. I have never had no. sex to High Hopes by Panic of the Disco for two hours. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I don't know if Lucas understands the gravity of that because I don't know if you know no. the song. Nope. That was the song. Remember when Pete Buttigieg was running for president? Yeah. Okay. People did a dance for his campaign to this song. You I know the one that goes. That. I only have high, high hopes for a living. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That song on loop, two hours, smelly room. Oh God, that song, Jesus. Oh no. It was bad. Yeah. Now he gets it. No, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I've never had a date that catastrophic. Okay. I have not Way because I've also never gone on a date or like continued a date if I was like, all right, this person is light speed trash. <laughs> I've never, I've never continued. So I'm, much self-respect. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just that it doesn't even occur to me as an option. That's fair. It doesn't even occur to me like, oh, this would be like fun to look <laughs> back on when you're in like ten years. There's no like, I want to see where this goes. No, okay. not <laughs> once, not once. No. Fair. I, I went on a date with a girl. I, I, when I, I, I'll tell you this though. I once went on a date with someone who, on our, we went out twice. Okay. And on the first date, like just while we were uh, walking on the street, she pulls me and starts making out with me against Whoa. like against a building. I was like, oh, this is cool. And then she shoves my hand down her pants Ooh. right then and there. In I was like, public. whoa, in public. Was it there like, wasn't anyone oh, this around is fun or cool or like stop doing this right now? I was all right for that moment, but okay. I was, but I did say afterwards, I was like, that was a lot. That, wow. That was okay. So much, really? I was like, this is okay. And, and she was like, so oh, are, are you okay? I was like, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Love it. Love is love. Yeah. Yeah. I well, can't do the exhibition. I can't do exhibitionism either. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are you an no. exhibitionist? Not generally. I feel like. Specifically, though. <laughs> I feel like the, like, I, I'm a fan of a little PDA. Mm. I like, like a little PDA. I think, like, public sex would be too much, but of, like, oh, look who I get to date. Like, I like that. Yeah. Too. That's nice. Yeah. I like to kiss someone I love in front of everyone. So if anyone wants to love me, <laughs> mm. that's okay. It's allowed. I'm okay with like a, a, a few, a, a little bit, but too, I can't do too much. Okay. And I've been with people that wanted it too much, and I was like, I feel so Lucas, weird. Lucas, you really don't have to come for me like that. <laughs> There's a history I wasn't aware of. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We uh, have never had sex yet. <laughs> There's still time. Yeah. Why do you yeah. think I'm doing this pod? That's what podcast hosts do. Oh, no, no. We, we've you been We've been playing this game for a while. Let me tell you, this game ain't ending. <laughs> This game ain't ending, baby. That's what everyone always says. <laughs> I think Until something happens. And then something you happens. might be the person in my life who I wouldn't have sex with the most. <laughs> it would just be so weird. I Do you know what's funny is that I have thought, I was like, what, uh, just hypothetically, what would it be like to have sex with Gabby? Just what would it be like? I've thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Just what would it be like? And I, but every time I'm like, oh, of course not. No. <laughs> it just, I could it not. I could not. I'm sorry. We would do bits. Yeah, I could. More. I could. I could not take you seriously in a sexual situation. I just couldn't do it. 
Can you do the impression of me as a sex worker? Oh my god. Oh yeah. So oh, wait, I can I can this. I give the introduction that yes. you gave me, which was that Gabby was considering. I can say this. You can say this. Okay, so Gabby was considering maybe getting on OnlyFans. It's an idea to do. Yeah. It's a thing to do. Absolutely. And then I was And then just the idea of her like uh, like doing any kind of sex work could just end up being like, "All right. How do you want to come? <laughs> Let's do it. What do you like?" It's very old Jewish man. Yeah. <laughs> Larry David style. <laughs> I I uh yeah, I've thought about I feel like there's not enough like old gay women who get like some young lesbian to like pleasure them. And I would be so happy to do it. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I feel like there'd be a huge market for that. Oh yeah. No one has reached out, but I also haven't asked. I feel like that could be a barrier. <laughs> no. Yeah. I I don't need to ask for what I need. It'll nope. just come to me. Just mind read. Yeah. Mm. You really, we, it seems like a good really. deal for like like a hot older woman. Like who wouldn't want that? Yeah. <sighs> I really I I I like older women. They're mm-hmm. cool. I, mean, I I often have a weird thing with the with the age gap where it's like God forbid I date someone my own age. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, you if can't they're do way that. older or younger, that's great. But I no, I have never I've never had a huge Oh no, wait, excuse me. I did once when I was 22, I went on a date. Oh my god. I went on a date with a 30-year-old woman. Okay. That was like biggest like age gap I've had like on a date. And uh she went to my middle school and we knew Whoa. like a lot of the same teachers, but she had an eight year old son and a one year old son. Whoa. And she was en route to divorcing her husband and he had moved out the day before. So she was, it was a fresh wound. This was, oh, oh my God, cracking open the seal on that one. That was. You were the cherry on top of a crisis. Yeah, yeah. Nothing happened. We didn't. Was we it not, fun? I actually enjoy. She was beautiful. Okay. She was so gorgeous, oh, and fun. I actually I was like, "Hey, do you want to go out again?" She Wait. didn't get back to me. Oh well, she was, was going like, through it. She was going through it. Can't take it personally. Wish her well. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I'm trying to think of any really bad dates I've been on. I went on a date with a girl one time. We went to a Thai restaurant, and um, she just I don't know what it was. She was like nervous or something. Okay. Every time she went to order, she'd go, "Uh, can I have a oh, fuck? <laughs> no." God, no. What? Okay, I'll actually have... No, that's not right. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is a first date? Yeah, this was a first date. That's she wild. Was freaking out. And I was like, what? literally, what Can is I help wrong? You like, out? just order Let something. Can you read? That's crazy. <laughs> she could read, but at that point, I was that's just good. like, I think, I think there's just like too much happening There's here. There's an incompatibility. Yeah, I think... Poor girl. She went back to my... Well, obviously, <laughs> she was horrible to talk to, could not sustain the conversation, so obviously she went back to my place, and... Of course. Nice. Uh, we did not have sex, because I think when she initiated, I was kind of like, I might not want to have sex with this person. So mm. I kind of just, like, smiled, like... <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, she uh, panicked and frantically grabbed all her stuff and was what? like, uh, I, I gotta go. And left the room. That sounds, was this a Tinder or a hinge find? Tinder. Oh. Wow. That was when my best friend said to me, uh, you're not going to like find what you're looking for, like oh. sitting across the table from like a stranger. Interesting. And what? yet you keep looking. I <laughs> can't stop. Oh stop. my God. I just remembered. I actually showed you a picture <laughs> of her. Uh, th- this is someone I went out with on one date and she had like just started doing stand up. Okay. And she also like did cartoons as Whoa. well on Instagram. Oh no, she's bad. Oh okay. She was so bad. <laughs> Not good. But she it. kept like talking about it. She was like, I've found my voice. She was she was she was so confident that she was so good. And because like she was like really attra- I was like I was really trying to convince myself that like, she was good. There's competence. Yeah. Or, like it could she could get good. Yeah, right. and she couldn't. No. no, the sensibility she wasn't there. I was even at the end of the day. I was like, "Yeah, this is great." Well, me, and then I, and then a day afterwards, I was like, "Wait, I don't feel that." <laughs> it takes me a while to realize to, like, how I actually it. feel. Me but too. yeah, it took me a moment, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, no, I, I felt nothing for this person I'm one not bit." Into it. I also, no. have, I have like a twenty-four hour lag. Yes, what's your lag? <laughs> oh, oh, it, oh, it's oh, Lucas, sometimes months. Like years. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sometimes months. <laughs> It ta- it sometimes it's takes longer. months. Yeah. Mine is also months. months. When something okay. bad happens to me, I'm like, I know I will process this in 2026. Eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's something to look forward to? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. It's like we we don't know how we feel about anything. No, it's yeah. it's I'm so divorced from my emotions. It's no, bad. I'm getting better. 
I'm getting better. Do you but guys think it's a yeah. comic thing or do you think it's like a traumatized thing? <laughs> I, th- I think it's I think it's a uh, childhood like no your your focus should be on how other people are doing rather than your own well being. Like I think it's that in. I think that's what that's what at least what that's what it is for me and that's what it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. What was your childhood like? <laughs> what was my full childhood? Pretty good. Everything. The whole deal. Start yeah. to the you were born. I was you remember? born. Grew up in Chicago. Nice. Okay. Single dad. What sign is your trauma? What sign? Yeah. Is this an astrology question? Yeah. Cancer. Mm. My mom died of cancer, there and I'm a go. cancer, so I think I answered the question. You <laughs> did, you nailed it. <laughs> kind of crushed You nailed yeah. that. Your mom died. That's sad. It happens. What are you going to do? Yeah. It's kind of a cliche way to go. <laughs> yeah, she, God, she's so hack. I, I know. know. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry to hear it. Single dad. Thank you. Single dad. But he's good at man. it. So good at it. Yes. Siblings? One younger. Oh, ah, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, not bad. Um, okay. My dad is a wonderful man. We grew up at, like, very good friends which was nice it's like a weird dynamic to explain to people now just because like he has full data on my life in a way that would be inappropriate for any other family what does full data mean right here like whenever i like go out with someone for the first time like he you debrief with exactly there's like full information in a way that is weird gotcha Mm. yes yes i like that it's kind of nice do you you have that or no uh no (laughs) i absolutely not with my with my a little bit with my dad Okay. A little bit with my dad, I had that. Like, he was actually someone I, he, actually, yeah, with my dad, he was, I mean, like, not full detail, but if I was really going through something right. emotional, I knew that, I knew that he would know I was going through something and that he knew how to be a good listener when there was a crisis. Oh. He was, he was very good at identifying just like, okay, this is a time where I just need to be there for Lucas and just like. That's yeah. huge. He was he was really good at that. That's my mom, she's nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's complicated with my qualities. parents because like they listen to the podcast, but I'm not gonna. Which is <laughs> that's I guess, so. F- I guess it's oh, how my mom finds this podcast is over for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's I'm so done. I mean, she knows that's about the it. End. What did she? Do? What's your what? mom's name? Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, her name is Lisa. What did Hi, you Lisa. tell her we were doing? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no wait. She, no, she knows about the podcast. <laughs> Gabby and I are having sex. <laughs> Sorry, you can't come in. <laughs> I just I just have these weekly little sex sessions Perfect. with my friend Gabby. You know, yes. Gabby? Yeah. Yeah. With a third guest to watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of observe. Take hey, notes. if you it's guys nice want to have, have a, a moment, I'll be supportive. No, I'll my bring mom, you whatever you need. No, she knows about the podcast. She does. Yeah. <laughs> she does. You know, my, mom, my, my parents, they, they listen to the podcast. The problem... The problem is, is like the podcast is really a, a way for me to communicate with them because I can talk without getting interrupted by them. Uh, and um, huge. I mean, and I think they know that. And I think that they both know they're like lively, vivacious people and they are good in a crisis. But it is a little bit of like if I were to talk about the things that I was going through, I, I don't like I don't know. We, we kind of have a relationship where like I'll tell them a little bit, but I, but I mostly get like real advice from like my best friends mm. yeah that yeah. seems like a good way to do it that's so awesome it's so nice that he like makes you feel safe enough that you can like just come forward with like details about that that's beautiful he's a prince I'm that is so lucky. lovely he's a prince is he yeah. hot yes yeah um how which, tall is he he's a jewish well what he says is a jewish six two so he's five nine <laughs> um that's his big line <laughs> a killer but he is he's pretty in he's a way that makes me upset um yeah. Like my friends in college mm. were like, I'd sleep with him. I was like, I didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> my my friends do the same with my dad. Cool. Yeah. I'll po- I'll post a photo of him and all the girls are like, can I uh, say something? Oh, yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> Please don't. Not Please at all. don't. Yeah. People didn't do that with my parents, but they anytime they saw like photos of my parents when they were younger, they were like, Jesus Christ. Just like, no, wow. your mom is hot now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would you? Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna find so much when she listens to this. <laughs> There's a lot to discover. Yeah, there's a <laughs> lot. lot to unearth. Oh you know? yeah, word. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Wait, so wait. Uh, d- who do you feel like you are? Who do you feel like you're more similar to, mom or dad, in personality? I think everything. dad completely. Okay. So I had a very weird high school experience because I had a brain injury when I was 14, mm-hmm. and okay. then proceeded to spend. Then like I had like issues for like four years, so I talked to almost nobody but him. For like wow. four years. Wow. Um, and so like in like key developmental range, I was talking exclusively to this 50 something year old man. So I 
still like st- sound like him. Like it's kind of alarming. Like nobody should develop that way. I mean, yeah. I'm lucky that it was him, but it was strange. <laughs> Everyone's um, like, God, this girl knows a lot about World War II. <laughs> yeah. So much. <laughs> Just really a ton. <laughs> <laughs> It was alarming. Damn, Italy's history is ambiguous. Damn. <laughs> really no way to know. So you had a, after your brain injury, like, what was the readjustment like? So I, like, it was very, so I took, I was out of regular school for, like, a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, and spent all of that time in a dark room watching The Amazing Race, basically. Um, Did you watch Robin Amber's season? I don't know. Who okay. is she? What's The Amazing Race? The it's amazing a perfect race? TV show. It's a perfect, you explain it. No. I think you could do it better. Um, it's a show where couples or father and daughter or father and son or um, I feel like occasionally other types of people, siblings, yes. uh, pairs, um, okay. do arbitrary tasks in strange locations really fast and they have to <laughs> do it until they win. It's sort of how fast can you culturally appropriate is sort of the issue of like Mm. you need to put on like monastic robes and say a prayer and it's like uh uh-oh but the fact that it's a competition makes it okay (laughs) (laughs) they gotta put the robes on gotta put the robes on sometimes you have to eat yeah stuff that's that's like people are like oh this is so gross and the locals are like well that's our food they're like disgusting (laughs) (laughs) it's a little out of touch but kind of well-intentioned yeah Hmm. um perfect to be so nice. you watched that in a dark room for years and years <laughs> to the point where I was like so deeply in my little dark room that there is a grease stain on the back of on my headboard from high school where my head was all of those years. And when I brought people home, it's been like, this is my grease stain. <laughs> it's like, her, welcome home. <laughs> her name's Elise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It was like horrifying. <laughs> um, and then, so I was spent like most of high school, like in a dark room alone. Okay. Um, in bed like it was bad but I also I went to a school it wasn't like explicitly for people with mental disabilities but it was like an alternative school mm-hmm. um, where it was like anything from like behavioral challenges to like actually having a disability um, and that year it was like very new age and progressive and the big idea was like we're not going to have individual subjects um, we are going to have like it's going to be merged so instead of like history and science there was a merge class called disease and the idea was like it was big like learning through doing so they assigned every kid a disease (laughs) and was like you need to make everyone else experience this um i got alcoholism (laughs) um another kid the most cerebral of the diseases (laughs) (laughs) um so to make everyone experience that oh my god Um, wasn't that what they like did to the native americans with the syphilis blankets well, they just actually that gave just, it. That's just everybody. infection. <laughs> that's yeah, just, just infection. Well, what, well what, what else am I supposed to interpret from make everyone experience this disease? <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you want to put it like that. Oh, I didn't right. give everybody, like, Jack <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's a bottle. Here's a bottle. Yeah. Here's a bottle. Whenever you're sad, just drink this. <laughs> what, exactly. Whatever the dark <laughs> voices in your mind tell you to do, just go, go nuts. You'll yeah. feel better. Just have it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> just constantly. I don't understand. It's only this... a perfect solution. Exactly. I feel that this experiment and sets people up for failure. It was a real issue. So the way that I made everybody experience it was I gave everyone M&M's and was like, have one. And then it was like, do you want another one? And that was my whole presentation. Um, another kid got sleepwalking, which is debatably a disease, but made all of these kids, all most of whom were having some issues, blindfold themselves and wear earplugs and wander the building. And that was allowed. <laughs> love this school it was a perfect institution this is okay Th- okay this is a great reality show more than a high school <laughs> this is that's wow it was wild the m M&M and thing is funny because what it implies is that like alcoholism is like kind of fun so fun <laughs> it's kind of like it's the best you, oh you have one oh, it's delicious you want another piece of chocolate well you're a piece of shit <laughs> And then they're going to forgive themselves and be like, everyone wants another piece of chocolate. I'm you want to be drink cool, right? To death. <laughs> that was the whole, it was, I was breeding empathy. That was mm. my objective. Wow. Oh my God. Wait, what were some other uh, diseases? Other diseases? Yeah. Um, oh, people, some kid got schizophrenia, which is a very serious one to make everyone else experience. And for the whole class played like auditory hallucinations. And it was like, 
this is a terrible idea. It's like, yes, I have maybe more of a sense of what this is like, but oh my God, like it was not well planned. Oh my uh, God. To put that and sleepwalking in the same presentation crazy. is like These crazy. feel like really different situations. Oh my um, God. It was a wild institution. I love how these diseases weren't tiered at all. <laughs> no, not at all. It was just like, no levels. these are all maybe diseases. Oh um, my God. It was a perfect place. <laughs> I'm trying to think like what the craziest thing I was ever assigned to do. And it's nothing come close to that. Do you have one in mind of like this one didn't make sense? Um, I'm, I'm really crazy assignment. I had to, Oh, I, I just had teachers throw stuff at us. Wait, That's what? insane. Oh, Did yeah. Throw stuff Did you go to Catholic you? school? No, public school. Holy shit. In, no, my middle school, Mr. Goldstein, <laughs> he threw like uh, lunch, his lunch. He threw like cups. He threw uh, sometimes a notebook. That's in- That's That heavy. feels like Scott Rudin vibes. Did you hear about that? Wait, who is that? Scott Rudin is the producer of like, he's produced a bunch of things. He produced like To Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway, a bunch of like really famous movies. And it was like a rumor in Hollywood that like nobody lasted longer than a year working for him because he was so scary. And one of the things he allegedly did was he threw a baked potato at someone. (laughs) Well, at least it will be softer than a raw one. I mean, objectively, <laughs> much better. really funny. Also, it would be insane if he like had raw potatoes in his office and just threw them. What if it was just a game of ammunition. hot potato? That's what it could Surprise be. Surprise hot potato. Could be. Just a little toss. It also seems like crazy like, to go through that to make your lunch and then fling it at something. Hollywood no. people are insane. I think they're, they're all on like various kinds of drugs. And I, I think that there's a whole industry that I was once a very big part of you know in my hollywood cuck pa days of Mm. like you like wake up bananas early and try and like basically do anything that the company needs you to do like i was like running to the pharmacy like five minutes before to try and like i don't know get this guy adderall like when like he didn't need more adderall like that kind of shit you know i feel like so much of Hollywood but also like just like the acting industry I feel like it's it's almost like an extra thing just created to give people a lot of stress because did did you ever go through like where people were like okay your resume has to be eight and a half by eleven it has to be stapled at all four quarters to 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 your headshot it has to be exactly it was it was so specific and intense and they're like if you don't do this it's not even going to be considered and like a lot of people like that I've spoken to are like, no, we don't actually care that much about it. I don't know why this is like taught as a thing. I I've never acted. That's not, I mean, it seems well. You so have stressful. acted. You played the bear. I did. Yes. I played the bear. Yeah, I played the bear. But <laughs> yes. this is good to know. You have to staple all four corners. Yeah, but it's they were like you have to cut like the sides of your resume after wow. you print it out, so it's like perfectly dimensional. It's like that sounds wild. It's so it's so crazy, spe- unnecessarily specific. When you were graduating college, were you like, I'm going to sort of be a, like, just act? Or was, did you always know it's going to be like stand up and like there's going to be a range of stuff? Oh, oh, straight out of college, I was, I was just gearing just to be an actor. Oh, well, yeah. okay. Just like, and it was, and stand up, I only found, well, something I like wanted to do ever since I was a kid, but I only okay. found the courage when I was 24. Okay. That was, wait, wait, when did you start doing stand up? I did it for the first time when I was 18. Whoa. Um, that's brave. At school? That's no, or like eight shit at a like, couple mics in Chicago and then moved to Boston. Mm. Um, and I, I that's how, how bad you bombed. You were like, oh, I need to, I need to city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to, I need to like skip town. The first mic that I did, there were like three people in the crowd. Um, and it turned out one of them didn't speak English. Like he was Italian <laughs> and he, like he went up and the whole set was incomprehensible <laughs> because of how thick his accent was, except for I'm gay. And it was like, all right. <laughs> cool um but i don't know how you guys when you first started but i was like i was like bombing bombing but i was like everyone else is wrong like that was really great and they're missing out and it took a certain sense of delusion to be able to do it i think like it took i think it took me like nine months to be like oh i'm bad at this like Mm. it like it took a minute to settle in interesting but i don't know i don't feel like i ever had that kind of delusion i was like oh no i'm actually real i never had that not once <laughs> yeah. that seems oh, better i was more like um i don't know i would really i think i i think that 
your approach was more admirable because you get to develop more of a sense of who you are on stage. Like, I feel like the reason I became like a high energy comic was because I was like, I need them to like me so bad. I feel like that's what entertainers should do. <laughs> yeah. Of like, but sometimes I eat it's it fun to watch people just like doing their thing. Like when I watch you on stage, I'm like, this is so, this is so great because you're just not bowing to anyone's whims around no, what you're It's you it's it's confident. That's yeah. what's beautiful about your stand-up That's is that it's so confident. And, it, and but then it's like it's earned confidence because like the writing is so tight. Yeah. That is so generous. I yeah. don't know if it's earned, but it's Were you fun. always like a one liner comic kind of? I sort of. I had trouble as like a thinking thing. I had trouble writing essays when I was a kid. And this like teacher sat me down and was like, the reason you're having trouble is you think in bullet points. And like that, it changed my whole life. Cause it was like, you're right. Like I, it's not, it was not really like an intentional thing. I just like, I have trouble thinking any other way. That um, is, it is so special to have a, just someone in an, as an authority figure be like, oh no, your brain just works in this way. This totally. is how you, this is how you digest concepts. Right. Like you're not stupid. You just, I mean, maybe, but like yeah. there's something else going on. Which Thank God she said it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was gonna say it exactly i wish someone had told me uh gabby you think in boobs <laughs> would have been a lot you're of a boob man help for me no i'm an ass man okay i like <laughs> them both i like them all that was what? deceptive <laughs> what, what, what what are you a boob man i'm open-minded you're open mind okay. i mean thankfully everyone i've dated has had both nice. that's what so yeah i don't like even have i to like pick? to have both i don't like to really pick it's unbelievable same brother so yeah. lucky yeah <laughs> Like, I, wow. I think it's kind of a false like choice, like a false binary. Right? Yeah, you uh, you never have to choose. Very few people come with this one. Yeah. I know. The thing I usually notice <laughs> is like a nice ass. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> who, are you, who are you talking about, Ellen? <laughs> <laughs> Neither. <laughs> Ellen, uh, Ellen doesn't really have uh, much of anything, I think. Mm. I have to be honest, I've never thought about it. <laughs> I'm thinking about like, it. What's too. under that sweater? <laughs> <laughs> well, so one, one kind spirit. <laughs> it does remind me of one thing that I, I said once to someone I was uh seeing for a minute and it was like truly so mean, but it was also true, was that my butt was bigger than hers. <laughs> which is I feel like a lot of women would love to hear that. No. Okay. <laughs> No, but if you if you've seen my butt, it's it, it's it's an insult. It's an insult of all insults. It's kind of a flat butt. It's, did you mean it as an insult? We were like, I'm I didn't mean it. I did not mean it as an insult. I was just like, oh wow, mine is because uh, we because we, we we did like a profile view in front of a mirror, and I was like, damn, my butt's bigger than yours. And then she was like, oh, and I That's was like, so ah funny. shit. I was like, I, I shouldn't have said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I was fourteen, I had a really big crush on one of my friends, but she and I got into an argument because. She said she had B cups, and I was like, "You have A cups." <gasps> I was and nagging who her. Who was right? Uh, I was right. You were right. She had A cups. They grew to B cups eventually, but come on, A cups are allowed. A cups are so a okay. Yeah, yeah. But That's... I don't know. It was. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had this when like, I've never. I don't like neg people, but sometimes when I like someone. If I I worry that if I'm too nice, they're gonna like they're they're gonna like call the police they're gonna like <laughs> run away like, this is too much they're gonna be like well, what does that mean they're gonna be like you being this nice to me is like actually disgusting <laughs> oh interesting or like this is do you feel like that's how you react when people are super nice to you of, no like, i love it okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm not one of those people who's like yeah. ew anyone who it likes grows. me is like your kindness is love, based yeah i actually love when people are nice to me i it's don't like cool. being nagged i like that's being fair. lightly roasted but i don't like being nagged Okay, reasonable. How do you feel about being nagged? It hurts my feelings so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm so sensitive about it in a way that is embarrassing. Interesting. But I don't know. I, 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 re I, if, if I get nagged, I just go, okay, goodbye. Like, I know, but, but I will go, okay. I, I will go, I believe you. Mm. Not in that I agree, but I believe you, and I think that's valid. Okay. If I, someone says if someone says like something negative towards me, I'm like, all right, that's a fair opinion. I don't want to see you again, but that's fair. Right. Yes. Yeah. I feel like people are usually right when they nag me. I feel like that's why it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, put. they're like, oh no, I've thought about that for years. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, oh no. Oh, when people flirt with you that way, are you like, I can't do it? Oh, I, I never, I never read it as flirting. Oh, interesting. Okay. No, it's only in the past maybe couple of years that I started realizing, oh no, this person was actually flirting with okay. me. Like yeah, that's what was going on. Yeah, but no, but my uh, like my second ever relationship, 
uh, happened because I, a uh, friends told me, oh yeah, she was like really into you and was like flirting with you the whole time we were like doing that play <laughs> together. And I was like, what? Really? I was like, what the fuck? And then I reached out. I was like, hey, you want to hang out? She's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. I feel it. like sometimes like I don't know if it's really negging, but sometimes I get a little teen boy if I like a girl. I got, a little, I got a little bit and like you chase her around. Hey, stupid head! Oh, <laughs> you're so Disney Channel coded. I'm really <laughs> Disney Channel coded when I like a girl. It's I'll like that goes obvious. over well. Um, sometimes it goes well, and hey, doodle head. Usually, I kind of get friend zoned because people are like, "That's funny." <laughs> you, know? you can't be funny if you're trying to. You be, be you very can't. Serious. People are like, "Oh, I like a funny." person like the, being funny oh i have to beyond. go funny to 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 <laughs> hook someone that's your move oh i have to oh yeah <laughs> it's kind of my mo too but at the same time like when it's a girl with a girl i don't know if you felt this way but like if you're trying to charm a girl with your sense of humor it, it, it's most of the time they're like it's so nice to have a bell <laughs> like this wasn't the reaction if you if you want to attract i'm gonna the, be right back i'm just gonna use about if Wait. you want to attract a super hot yeah we're gonna talk about gay stuff while you're gone <laughs> I feel like if you want to attract a super hot girl, you have to seem like so serious. Interesting. So like that they brooding. take you ser- Yeah, brooding. So okay. that they take you seriously. Because if you're brooding, you're like a boy. <laughs> so mysterious. <laughs> angry. Like, Wait, I'm almost straight. I like a brooding person. <laughs> you're a brooding, angry person. Put your fist through a wall. Yeah. Have a finance job. <laughs> I just, I bring girls over. There's like drywall punches <laughs> in the wall. I'm a woman of feelings. <laughs> uh, as you can see, I've never laughed. Do you feel that way? Do you try and riz people with laughter? To try to, what was the question? Do you what try is, and riz people riz with laughter? People. Where does your I've riz come from? Anybody. You've what never, is the method? I've never rizzed anybody one time. Not once? I'm the worst flirt in the whole world. When okay. I met my girlfriend, we were like, or the like first time we really talked, I had the biggest crush. And she, she had a like, crush on you too, by the way. She did. Yes. Which was very convenient. But <laughs> she's a good flirt and she had no idea I liked her despite being like oh she's perfect like we like there was no i'm bad at sending signals i was because mm-hmm. i offered to buy her a drink and i was like oh i'm good like i don't have to do anything else <laughs> but that yeah. wasn't sufficient she was like i didn't know <laughs> so, so wait who made like the first move can i ask she, i like i asked her i was like nice. that's my job i was like i was really proud of it she's blonde um <laughs> blonde and i invited her to see gentlemen prefer blondes the marilyn monroe movie okay Mm. i was really proud of myself that is a great choice yeah i was pretty thrilled great movie there's an extremely homoerotic um scene among like the it's the like u.s olympic team and they do a big dance number in their underwear um so if any any men that like homoerotic it's a great movie I think Gays? a lot of our listeners are, are like in that stuff nowadays. Perfect. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they didn't used to, but they started listening to the pod and it's like. Turn them gay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The twin flames. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> We're the twin flames. <laughs> the, ch- the three flames. <laughs> <laughs> twin flames uh, and the watcher. Three twin flames. flames. And speaking of turning people gay, we have some listener submissions. Well, um, usually it's like. Uh, people who um i don't know want want advice and sometimes they're a little younger and they like write into us asking for advice um hold on so i'll pull them up now i so far we okay, only yes. had one lucas but it's kind of long so you okay okay i got it all right so this is a little bit of a long one all, all right so uh hi meerkats and guests uh so basically my mom recently started very verbally supporting the police department in our town It makes me uncomfortable for a few obvious reasons that were especially apparent the last few years. But what irks me the most is the is the fact that she made my nonverbal autistic twin brother wear a police department shirt. Mm. It bothered me. It bothers me because, well, he has no idea what he's supporting. It's also difficult for me because I understand what my mom thinks she does about. 
Nice. Sorry, we don't vet these at all. No, not at all. Um, <laughs> That's a much better way to do it. Sorry, we it's literally yeah. don't read them before we read them on the pod. That's beautiful. It's, it's also difficult for me because I understand why my mom thinks the way she does about this. When I was in middle school, my brother ran away from home several times, and on a very severe incident, it was actually the police that brought him back home safely. Since then, my mom's been friends with the chief of police, which is a good thing if you want to ensure the safety of your disabled son. Also, our town's police department appears to be getting funding cuts, hence the sudden verbal blue stripe support of the police it is a little funny to me that my mom is a lesbian democrat but is also so bad at being a democrat that she somehow 180'd and started blue lives mattering us all i'm not about to debate my mother on her politics i'm not interested in creating another wedge between us what i do hope is that if she thought it was a good idea to get me a fucking police department shirt I'll have enough guts to politely refuse without her getting pissy at me. I do not want a political debate with her. How do I go about this? Also, it's worth mentioning that I'm 20 and more than halfway through college, so I'm more independent than I've ever been before. I just really do not want to create more conflict between my, between my mother and I. There's enough of that. Thank you in advance. Wow. Have you guys demonstrated, in terms of advice, mm. have you talked extensively about police or navigating family relationships or we are family un- relationships we are yeah. unqualified for literally everything that's yeah, yeah, asked yeah. of us <laughs> yeah okay. we once we once had a, a kid say oh, god. oh my god this, we once had a kid say that uh they were in an eastern european country where homosexuality is really not um like it it's still very taboo okay. and like he had a crush. I think he's like in middle or high school. He's like, I have a crush or they, I, mm-hmm. I still don't know, but like, I have a crush on someone of the same sex. Do I go about it? And we were just like, Jesus. Cause it was like literally That's so high no, no, no. stakes one. Well, here's so, what yeah. happened. It was like my straight guy, best friend <gasps> is like showing. This is a different one. That was, this is an, I think this is someone in, oh. in like either the UK or America. I thought okay. you were about to talk about the time where like this kid wrote into us being like, my straight guy best friend this and is I another crazy like, one yeah cu- like cuddling all the time and it's very On camping clear. trips spooning we're like spooning it's very clear so we, we want something but to happen but the straight dude the is religious and the straight dude is oh. religious oh yeah and which we means like, he's gay yes we were like go for it go for it you know like it seems yeah. like the, the answers are all there like he wants to cuddle and stuff and then he wrote into us like uh, so I took your advice and uh, it really didn't work. Uh, oh, my no. best friend doesn't talk to me anymore. So thanks, I guess. <laughs> it was a good thought. I mean, I feel like it's hard to know if you're cuddling on a camping trip because that's where body heat. There's sort of a premium on that. So it might yeah. just be. Yeah. Like in Twilight where uh, Jacob cuddles uh, Bella. All right. It took a, an <laughs> hour and nine minutes in for Twilight to come up. Everything is about Twilight. <laughs> that's what I always say. Are you a fan? Um, I read them, but I'm, I don't know things about them. I read them, so no. My one trivia, Twilight trivia, is the hand model from the cover really tried to capitalize <laughs> on that moment for her culturally and tried to tour with the cast and came out with an apple-scented hand cream. <gasps> That's Girl my boss. one. Twilight okay, this is great trivia. Data point. How That's do you know good. this? Because I was going out with someone, like you know, when you're dating so- or like casually dating someone, and you'll like Google anything to have a thing to text them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this. that came from years ago, and oh this fact my God. is stuck. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> being like fu- fun <laughs> trivia <laughs> to text hot chick. <laughs> Uh, uh, did you, did you know the cat and the Godfather died? <laughs> oh my god! The girl's I'll like, say just say how are you? <laughs> That's so just be funny. like, hello, thinking of you. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my! God. I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna text every hot girl in my phone. Like, <laughs> did you know that Christopher Nolan's real name is David? <laughs> did it's you know even better Christopher... if it's not true. <laughs> His middle name is Hands from Twilight. <laughs> I love All that one hand. word. Uh-huh. No, but so to this uh, to this gal. Um, First of all, I just want to say one thing. Liberal Democrat, they love cops. So, so much. this means nothing. If you've ever watched uh, the show The L Word, uh, you'll find Bette Porter is one of the most prominent liberal Democrats. And she is the ultimate neoliberal and um, cheats on everyone she's with. Nice. So, yeah. But if I were OK, if I were in your position. I would say, Mom, 
it makes so much sense why you love the police because like especially locally they helped us out when my brother uh went missing obviously you care so much about them you need to understand though in a global context this means something very different i don't feel comfortable wearing this shirt right coming yeah. from a place of understanding also you're compassion. gay and i hate you <laughs> yes fuck yes. lesbians <laughs> don't like those yes just say that and don't mention the cop stuff <laughs> Step Genius. one, okay, reason one, you're gay. Uh, reason two, repeat step one. <laughs> you could replace the Blue Lives Matter flag with a rainbow one. Ooh. Just try to encourage a different passion. Oh, coming back with a way to show support of your mom. Great. Perfect. Yeah, that's Perfect great. plan. I feel bad for the brother that has to wear the shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like you could just, it could go to the laundry and disappear replace it with a different one that's true that is an oh my god that makes is me a little worried because i've always had this uh this this thought that when i have a child i want them to wear um a yankees onesie <laughs> that, that's a clear vision that's H- how old are you gonna make them wear it like out of the womb no i mean till what age D- 11 perfect <laughs> keep Straight going yankees 11, keep yep. going but after that they can choose whatever team they want no no but they don't have okay. to wear the jersey <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's a reasonable policy. Yeah. Okay. Wait. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, so let's pretend that I'm your child, uh, mom. I found about about this team that I actually really really like. They're they're called the Mets. Um. S- uh, listen, child. Um. Yeah, that's in- my name. Yeah. <laughs> you, d- you didn't give me any other name. Child. Beautiful name for a child. Yeah. Yeah. I it's love that forward. name so much. Um, it's so unique. <laughs> your. A great kid. Stupid. <laughs> I love improv, guys. You're stupid and Thank you. Go to hell. Thank you. How was that? It's good to take kids so down I a can, peg. So yeah. it's okay to be a Mets fan. Thanks, Mom. Uh and then I just shoot you in the head as you leave the house. <laughs> oh, I, I, I guess it's okay perfect. to be a Mets fan if they have a passion for baseball. What were you saying? Yeah. I think that was perfect. I agree. Yeah. Are you a are do you like baseball? Um no okay <laughs> you said it like it wasn't <laughs> i mean nobody seems to anymore no one's are you upholding a genuine fan yes like no things like listen to the games yes wow. i listen to podcasts about baseball i'm impressed mm. have you been a fan since you were like a like, small child yeah but it was weird because my parents weren't really fans okay. i just kind of came to it on my own wow mm. it's your own thing yeah it was just very interesting do you have any obsessions besides the amazing race that you just found and it's just something that you adore that i just found yeah um I feel like a lot of this is devolving to bad date stories, but I was going, I was on a date that was bad and she w- was telling me about like her passion for like black holes or whatever, or like mm. obsessed or like other dimensions. And she was like, what's your passion? Or like, wh- what's like your weird fascination? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was at that point in the day where I was like, we could say anything. Um, and I, so I was truthful, which was when I was in middle school, I got very obsessed with like in- skin diseases like super into it okay. and she was like what's your favorite one i was like i have an answer <laughs> so we like we like really delved into it so that's not a fun one to talk about what's your favorite skin disease neurofibromatosis what is that it's where you have like a lot of bumps yes that was impressive thank you how'd you know uh, i've watched dr pimple popper you're a hero thank you yeah i i okay here's my thing i love skin diseases can't watch dr pimple popper it's also really? you, it's also if you if, if you have a skin disease you can kind of just say bumps <laughs> you can kind of yes, take a swing and just be, it's probably on. bumps it's probably bumps yeah like things that shouldn't be on your skin the problem is the pimples get too big i don't like extremes i don't think they get big enough that's how i feel about it it's also jarring to me that like it's like been growing for 20 years it's like you should have addressed it. like that's <laughs> what a procrastinator <laughs> oh my god oh no there was oh there was one episode of like this dude who like he just he just puts a t-shirt over his shoulder because he has this huge lump on the back of his neck Whoa. and it's like it's a bit of like some sort of lymph fluid or spinal fluid or something that like there was a break in Whoa. it and so it like floods out and it like formed this big lump and Whoa. so it got like drained but he needed to see like such a uh, hyper specific like spine surgeon specialist to like uh, patch the hole Whoa. and it wasn't like it couldn't be done as like a skin thing it was like something so much deeper and he so just much like scarier than a and he, you could see the disappointment in his face when he had to be like more months down the line before it would actually like be fixed longer. it just it crushed it's you like oh i mean i feel like it's a show that could only be made in the united states where there isn't free health care because i feel like dr pimple popper canada the pimples would be like 
tiny because people just address it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people just go it to is. The it is a crazy thing where you're like, oh yeah, the only way you can get this covered is if you go on TV right. <laughs> to have it taken have care of. Millions of people watch on YouTube. I mean, it's same with like my 600 pound life. I mean, yes. I think the reason people go on that show is because they're like. Well, finally, I can actually address this. <laughs> like, this is a way to handle it. The show yeah. will pay for it as long as I do a sad voiceover where I say, and I couldn't stop eating. Yeah. It's so brutal. Like, it's also so dehumanizing to have it be, like, by weight or, like, thousand pound sisters of, like, that that's the fact that they lead with. It was, like, the only thing that could make it okay is, like, if every show on TLC was named that way. Of, like, the Property Brothers were, like, the 240 pound brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Little people, big world. Exactly. <laughs> like the 50 pound twins. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was going to say the okay. two ounce family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm oh, evil. God. Well, we didn't give you very much advice. But, no, we didn't. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, we did. You yeah, said we... throw your shirt, throw your mom's throw shirt, shirt away. away. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What else could, could your brother could about? lose it? I think something I wonder about too is like if you really support the police, mm. like how can you, like, is she actually going to do anything to help their cause? Because, mm. I mean, I feel like it's not great politically. Like, it's it's not good to have that opinion necessarily. Yeah. But, like, she's probably not going to bring them soup. Like, I don't know. Like, what? Like, besides paying or, taxes. Or, like, a fundraiser for your local police department. Like, do people do that? I don't know. Maybe. People do that. Yeah. Oh, people no. do that. Okay. Yeah. It, it seems like a little harmless obsession. Like, you know, me like, and Twilight. <laughs> like, I think it's probably fine. I just fine. love the police. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, I that is that is a good that yeah. is a that is actually a really good point being like is wearing these t-shirts the best way you can support the police? Something much more specific that isn't quite as showy. Right, that's maybe, actually maybe you could do it quietly. But I don't know. It yeah. seems like I a, love, think of I it love as like how like, you're helping your mom. All right. Yeah. We're going to make sure this <laughs> child doesn't get canceled. So we're going to make sure this mom's obsession is kind of in the shadows. <laughs> it gets taken away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you could like redirect her energy. Ooh. Of, like get her really into gardening. So mm. she stops being into the police. Like yeah. it, it sounds sort of like midlife crisis to me. Of like I need something to cling to. Interesting. Yeah. Get her like a Maserati and a hot chick. Her, that, that would work on me. I mean that me would, too. <laughs> I think we all would love a Maserati, I think we'd all love a Maserati and a hot chick. Who doesn't want? Who doesn't? And speaking of Maseratis and hot chicks. Lucas you want to introduce our final segment? Oh my god. Do I ever. We have the Maserati of hot chicks right here. And we. <laughs> <laughs> so. Our uh, our final segment is called Self Perception Corner, where we ask our guest oh. to describe how they believe they are perceived by other people, and then we say how we actually perceive you. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it's gonna go great. Great. I mean, I think I think I'm seen as depressive. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think people are like, uh oh, like they <laughs> uh -oh. like they see it and they're like, oh no. Um, I, poorly dressed of like that's somebody who doesn't understand proportions like I think that's a view of like if people were asked like do you does she know where a sweater should end they'd be like no <laughs> and I think the third thing I, I was at an, I was at a mic the other night and a wonderful person w was like counting women and queer people because it was mostly boys and yeah. went gay point <laughs> and so I think sort of like depressive poorly dressed homosexual Mm. Those are, I think, those are the main axes. Which kinda I feel like I think that's, the, I think that's why I like you so much. It. No. It's always wonderful to meet a similar kind of gay <laughs> to yourself. The same kind. I saw a kinship. I will say, I was uh, not to be like that girl you went on a date with, but I was pretty surprised at how different you are off stage from on stage. It's a different vibe because you have a totally different persona. <laughs> totally different. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I mean, I was kind of intimidated because I was like, she's so good. And then so when sweet. you like got off stage and your voice was like three octaves higher than it. <laughs> is on stage yeah. i was well, like, just to hear you giggle you have a beautiful giggle you that's so sweet i was yeah. like i can't believe this girl is like nice and normal <laughs> so it's yeah. a different vibe i appreciate nice <laughs> a nice normal fellow fucking uh messy mask of center Thank yeah you. gay Thank well, you. is it because like i would say like i've definitely like said hi to you a few times and definitely and i know i remember the first time i saw you i was like oh my god i want to like compliment her on her center because so i really sweet. liked it i was like oh i think you're really good and it, but like this is the pro this is easily the most that we've talked yes, to each other for sure and so this is like really the first time i've really gotten to sort of like receive your energy <laughs> and it is it's different than you thought right <laughs> it's well here's the thing is that I, it's it's n I wasn't expecting you to be just because I knew from your stand up. I was like, OK, I can tell that this is just one slice of this person, you know, 
I'm so honored. <laughs> yeah. It, it's 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 sort of like, okay, this is like a very specific and intentional version of this person. And I know that there's obviously so much more, but I'm like, oh, this so. is, so, you're just, you're very easy to be around. That's yeah. very generous. Very lovely to talk to you. Where so can people sweet. find you on yes. the socials? Where can people find me? Um, I've just started trying to do the social media thing. You're doing it. Thank you. I'm trying. It's, I met Isabel Mason L, which I'm told I'm going to have to change. Because Mason is my middle name. I was like, mm. that works. But it's not the name that I go by on stage. <laughs> but at Isabel Mason Elm. Okay. They're little videos. I've gotten into the real game. Beautiful. Real game. Real it's game rock. That is wonderful. Every time I do it, I feel awful. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> People always come in like, why are women so unfunny? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I don't know. Exhibit yeah. A. Please explain. <laughs> Please explain it to me. I would yeah. love so to know. to know. Oh Anyone my knows? God. Oh, that's the women aren't funny Hold police on. calling. Let's have this on. Oh yeah, Lucas gets scam callers seemingly every episode. Oh yeah, that's so. Do you okay, okay, talk okay, to them? Okay. Hello. Are you paying high bills for your TV, internet, and home phone? Press one and get the latest promotion, or press nine to take your name off. Hmm. Let's see. How are you doing? So shut. How are you? Oh, shut up. Why? Shut up. Why? I don't want to. Oh, you sound something uh, familiar. Yes. Somewhere. You do it. What's, what's your name? Gadot. What? Gadot. How do you spell it? G O. Oh, oh, you sounds like a, a duck. Sounds like a duck. Thank you. It sounds like a duck. It sounds like a duck. I am. Why are you so, uh, talking like that? Because I love you. Why are you talking like that? Fuck me like the ass! Stop what? Alright, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he engage with you for so long? That was impressive. I don't know. He was he was down. He was down for the cause. God, I they're like... bored at the call center. <laughs> that was incredible. I have various shows. Follow me at Hip Soccer Mom. If you're to the end of the episode, you already follow me, but keep doing it. I love you. Nice. Yes, uh, you can follow me at Lucas T. Arnold on all social media. Uh, sign up for my email list to let you know when I'm uh, in your area. I will let you know, of course. Uh, yes, uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you, thank to, you Isabel. to Isabel. Thank you to Isabel Levin so much. We've been two nosy meerkats. See you next time. See you next time. We were so great.